Um, so on our agenda tonight, so we've got our agenda review. Um, so we'll review and approve minutes. Uh, Pam, feel free to speak up throughout the meetings. Um, hoping at the end, we're also gonna be talking about including um, committee recruitment, but if there is anything specific for public comment, feel please, please do so. Um, then we'll do our kind of check in learning round table, anything to share. Um, report backs from related city committee meetings. So we've got um, the ones that I could remember were yeah, police, um, I mean, budget update, um, the school um, SRO group, um, things like that. Um, and then just kind of diving into the creative discourse work. So there's a quick fundraising check in. Um, and then just really like outreach check-in um, and work plan check-in, including the like updating the focus group contacts. And then um, also this conversation about other committees that are doing community outreach work. Um, because as I think Cameron or someone noted last time we met, um, there's just a lot of groups that are looking to do surveys coming up. And so just if we can compile that list and see how we can you know, best work together um, and then just if there's any next steps of the COVID response and then other business. Any changes to that agenda? Any additions? Cool. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda from Michael? I'll make that motion, I, except I write them. Oh, oh no, I didn't write the agenda. That's the minutes. Okay, okay yes. That's Cameron. All right. Yes, I'll make that motion. Jeremy, do you want a second? Yeah, I second that. Thanks. All in favor? Hi. Uh, yes. Any opposed? All right. Um, and then we. Uh, can I have a question about that? In in uh, in another committee that I'm on, um, I think Cameron, you said that we don't actually have to make a motion to approve the agenda. Is that right? Sure, you don't. I think you can just say yeah, that's good, and then you move on. Okay. Like right. Ninety nine percent sure. Lauren, are you are you the one percent? You can do that, right? It's fine. I think you can kind of say like, without objection, we'll consider the agenda approved and just move on. Something yeah. like that. Okay. And like you could pause and say like, in case there is an objection, but. Right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. Um, all right. And then moving on to Michael's notes, amazing work as per usual, Michael. I feel like these are particularly helpful with the uh, massive report back we got from capital area neighborhoods and I, sustainable yeah. Montpelier last time. So thank you so a much. Lot of, a lot of help from Cameron's notes too. So you know, this is a cooperative effort here. <laughs> thank you, Cameron. Yes, credit where credit's due, both places. So the question I have is on page two, the bottom of page two, we you mentioned three, that we got three grants. I was able to get and we didn't, and you couldn't remember what the third one was. Mm. Ben Jerry's Vermont Community Fund, and what's the third one? I am so sorry, I missed that. I'm sorry, one minute. I have to look in my inbox. Was it the awesome? Uh, Vermont Community Foundation. Did you say right. that one? Yeah. yeah. Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Oh, yeah. and um, the city is what I had marked out. <laughs> so it's not a grant. So oh. that's, that's why I had three in my, I, I apologize. Nope. So just, okay. just two. Thank you. So, and we haven't heard back from Awesome Foundation with, uh, that Julia applied to? Okay. All right, well, I'll make that change. Thank and you. Then... Uh, hold on a second. All right, so is, is someone... Uh, I I'll make a motion to All approve right. the minutes as amended. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. 
Awesome. Um, any public comment? Pam, putting you on the spot. And you're muted, but I think you're saying nah. Yes, I don't have any public comment. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Um, yet. Yes, feel free to jump in. Um, and so yeah, we wanted to re, you know, return to having this space of a learning roundtable just to be able to share our 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 own learnings and growings and and resources and um, uh, things that are happening with the group. So I know we did the check-in at the beginning, but um, if anyone has anything else they'd like to share, won't kind of do a go, like don't feel like you have to share something, but if you want to, that would be um, lovely. And maybe to pick on Lauren about what this this history of, of uh, you know, white supremacy in America that you had yesterday, if, you know, if there's anything like things like that. So if anyone has anything to share. Yeah, I can. Do T Rex have two fingers or three? This is a really important question. That my six year old's wondering. Um, I'm not sure, buddy. <laughs> three, you think? Okay, we don't know. But well, I think you could go look it up. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, so this was um, with a group called the Center for Whole Communities that I know at least Shana's worked with, um, who is working with my, my work. Um, and so this guy, uh, Delma, I actually don't know what his last name is, who has studied kind of African-American history, was gave a really interesting presentation, just like the history of like when kind of the evolution of how like race was created as a concept and why and how it was like brought and used as a, you know, lever to divide people like in various ways and then just how that's manifested and like just like the structures put in place and to some to some degree, I thought it was, I mean, it was very interesting to be listening to it um, yesterday um, because so much of it was so relevant to what was happening. Um, but it was also interesting just like how kind of like such a process of creating it, which in some ways gives me hope of like, it, you know, just like the, it's not inevitable. It was like, it was a human made creation, like, and like, so there were steps taken to do it that were very deliberate. And so we could very deliberately take different steps to undo it. So in some, you know, I have both created some like optimism as well as, you know, it's a really horrifying history. Um, I'll try to see if, I don't think that is something that I got that's shareable, but I know there are a couple of readings and I'd be happy to email those around um, that he had shared. Thanks so much, Lauren. What has the group done for these in the past? We just started again for the first time last meeting um, since going online. Um, when we were doing these in person, we just usually like pair up and, and chat for a while about, yeah, it was usually like a podcast that you listened to or a book that you read or something that you'd been digging in on um, to be able to share and, and also to like agitate each other. Yeah. So I, I would just add to um, what Lauren just shared um, and not knowing the specific kind of details of the content. Um, it made me think of something that was really helpful for me and starting to learn and understand the kind of history of whiteness and how race was created, like you said, Lauren. Um, it's this, some of you may have come across it before. It's, I think it was like a nine part or 10 part um, podcast series called Seeing White. Um, and I'll put the, I just found it again. So I'll put the link here in the chat um, from this great nonprofit documentary group out of, I think, uh, University of North Carolina affiliated. Um, and just a really in-depth uh, dive into, you know, kind of how we've arrived at this notion of race, particularly around as it pertains to white supremacy um and our own history as a country um so if you're if you're looking for more of that kind of learning and you've got and you like podcasts and you've got you know time to to spend um it's really well produced 
Um, it's a there's a great kind of setup with it. Um, the kind of main documentarian is a a white guy, um, and he partners with his colleague and friend um, whose name is Chandrai Komanicha, and he's a an African American uh, professor, artist, poet. Um, so there's really like good kind of honest processing and conversation as they kind of review that kind of the more detailed history. Um, they speak with a lot of different scholars and, and folks about these issues. So it's, it's, it's a really great resource. And I expect, you know, I'm about ready to go back and listen to it again. Um, Cause I, it's been about a year and a half or so since I've heard it. And I think there's, there's things I missed and things I need to hear again. So uh, might be worthwhile. Thanks so much. Um, Lolitha, not Lolitha, well, I think it was Pellin actually shared um, a implicit bias test. Mm. And I took that and I really recommend that everyone does that. It's pretty enlightening. Does what? It was a implicit bias test. So it was like one of those oh, tests. Yeah. I thought you were saying tech. Oh, like, no. no, that would be very bizarre. Um, no, it's part, it was a university's ongoing study. And so you become part of their study group, kind of. It's just an online test. Um, <laughs> that's all, I mean, that's all I'm gonna say. It was nice to, to be with that. I have uh, since June been taking my anti-racist education pretty seriously. So, a, a lot of a lot of listening, um, reading uh, cast right now, which is very sobering. Really hard to. It's taking me a long time to get through it because it's it's yeah. I, so much that I didn't know about our Jim Crow laws and. I think, yeah, it's been very, very sobering for me. But one of the things that I did back in June was um, I changed up my social media feed so that I am following now a lot of black and brown people in my social media. And that's really made a difference for me. You know, I just get used to seeing black and in our white state, black and brown people in my social media feed all the time from people that I, you know, admire, the Obamas and Oprah, Van Jones, people that we see all the time, but also people that I was not familiar with before and black, black activists. And um, it's, it's gotten me so used to seeing that in my, in my regular, every time I look at my phone, that I recently was looking for a comedy on some movie platform. And when all of the movies came up and you could see all the recommendations and they were all white, it looked really, really strange to me. And um, so that's been like one of the first baby step things that I did back in June. And it's, it's really made a difference for me. It, you know, in a way that I hadn't really noticed until I noticed it. So I recommend that a lot, every chance I get. Great idea, thanks. And also just wanting to check in, just reckon, I think we often say Vermont's, you know, one of the whitest states in the union and just recognizing too that there's a lot of people of color who live here and black mm -hmm. and people of color. So wanting to name that. Cool. Um, has, oh, the, go ahead. has the group ever taken on a reading together or like a podcast or a book or anything of that nature? We uh, did do that um, when Julia was the facilitator and when we were in person. Um, I think in, in talking with Julia about it in particular, I haven't actually talked to anyone else about it, but of... Um, it just feels a little goofy to do that when like Orca is recording, you know, and going on. I just, just being able to like really dig, dig deep and be vulnerable and, and personal. Um, and so that's kind of 
um, why we're just thinking of sharing this way, but um, if folks are, would be interested in, in digging in more deeply on, you know, a couple of readings or another idea that we discussed was like of having maybe someone like present uh, about some sort of history or information or, you know, uh, you know, particular like Montpelier, you know, racial, social, economic justice history, um, things like that. Um, if, if there's any other ideas of kind of how to grow and, and learn together as a committee, would love to hear that. I didn't necessarily mean that we have to share a lot more, mm. just that we have a- uh, Get on the same playing shared, field kind of. Yeah, we have a shared context and um, we don't, don't have to get a lot more vulnerable, but um, yeah. it would just be, yeah. So I don't, it was just a thing that I have been thinking about since the last time I was with you all. Um, Shana, something you said um, sparked something for me, which was perhaps to further our learning, but also more specifically applied to our, our work. What would it look like to invite um, you know, BIPOC folks from either as individuals or from organizations who can help us understand, you know, issues that are going on. Um, they may not always be specific to Montpelier because we're small, but, you know, certainly central Vermont, um, there's a lot going on. Um, and I wonder if having the chance to learn more together about some of those issues could be useful in helping us determine what we want to do or um, help us connect people together. So uh, that sounded would, interesting to me. Are you, are you suggesting that y'all ask people of color to join your meeting here to talk about their experiences as people of color? Because I think that's incredibly damaging. No, no, no. I, I mean, okay. um, there's a lot of work happening, I think, along the lines of racial justice um, and economic justice by different groups. Um, and I wonder if folks doing that work would have something, would, would find it useful to share with us uh, what's going on. That was my, that's my point. Yeah, and I think that's what I, I'm thinking that's a lot about why we're doing this project with creative discourses is to build these relationships. And um, if they're, if you in, you know, having conversations with some of the leaders of these groups or of these, you know, movements, if there are folks who are, um, you know, interested in wanting to, to share about their work to the committee, let's, let's invite them in. Michael, were you gonna say something too? Michael, were you gonna say something? I was gonna say that, I, I think with the the workshops or the small groups discussions starting up, as soon as we start getting feedback from that, then I think we'll have uh, opportunities to think about, well, who would we like to hear from specifically or what kinds of issues are emerging that we should be talking about. So I think we're sort of on the cusp of getting the information that we want through our project. Um, and I think it, for the time being, sort of monitoring that and you know planning for what comes for the next groups that we haven't yet as assembled, uh, it's going to take it's going to take all the time we we have. Yeah, and just also wanting to recognize that we've been on the cusp for a while, so yeah, I just rec yeah, feeling that urgency and and here's where we are. Well, with that, should I move us along to talking about the report back from city committees before diving into our, our creative discourse work? Um, police budget schools. Uh, maybe I'll hand it over to Lauren first to talk about the, the school um, resource officer meeting. I think there's a meeting again on the 12th is next time. Um, have you have you met since we talked last, or is there anything to report? I haven't. I'm not on the that oh, committee. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard um, was an update, and Cameron, you might remember better than me. We had gotten an update at council from um, Jay Erickson, who's one of the counselors, who's our council rep on it, and I think he had said 
you know, there's no decisions yet. It's still, the process is still ongoing. So last I knew it was like, they're still in the midst of the process, but finding their work with creative discourse, positive, and like that that was really helpful. So that was, that was essentially the extent of what I remember at least was like no decisions, but active conversations and like. They have sent you a, um, well, they sent council a survey, correct? Yeah, they did a survey. I, I don't know what's on the, I don't know what the questions were, but um, I'm assuming they were created with creative discourses assistance um, to just sort of get people's general feelings, the political leaders' general feelings about it. Survey so sent to whom? Council, city council. Oh, just to council, okay. Mm -hmm. well, I thought they that was like have, a city survey. Yeah, I think they also did some other larger survey. I only saw the part that went to council. Did they, for that survey, do you know, did they target specific groups or was it just a random selection? And do we know what that was? I have no idea. I apologize. Okay. No, don't apologize. I think it was, I think it was a separate survey for the general public versus council for sure, I think. Okay. Thanks. And Michael, maybe uh, about the, the police review committee? How about uh, has there been a meeting since the last time we talked or? No, the next meeting is the 11th. Okay. Um, and um, there's been nothing, not, nothing since the last time we met, I think. We, we, oh, we did get word that Keisha Ron will join that meeting, will participate yep. in that meeting. Um, and so that'll give us, on that committee, that'll give us the opportunity to find out uh, what they have in mind, how many questions would they would they will give us um, for you know for use in each of the um, in each of the groups. I I was looking over the the, um, the list of groups and um, and I think that I see that there is there is one just devoted to the Vermont Montpelier Police Department. So that's number three. Um, and so I don't, I'm not sure you know, what more we're going to do with that, but we'll find out. I'll find out on the 11th and I'll report back. Thanks. And then I'm just trying to see if I can pull the link, but I'm feeling technologically challenged right now. Um, but just also to share that, um, you know, the Montpelier police, the state chief police, um, have released various statements um, condemning the violence in um, DC and have um, suspended, uh, uh, the Bennington Police Department suspended a police officer um, based on like Facebook posts and things like that. So there's just a, a lot of kind of response and movement happening um, after the uh, insurrection yesterday in DC. So just, just sharing that too. Um, Anything else? Various committees. I could just mention briefly, we did the city budget. There was a meeting last night um, and the, the tool was raised and we, we did a kind of, we walked through the questions and you know, it was hard to do the entire budget like that. I think it's a much better for like a more specific line item, but people were thinking about it and it was nice to see like trying to grapple with the questions raised. Um, so that was great to see. And there was like one item that had been brought to council for consideration and we kind of thought through implications of that and who it benefited and brought back. So um, thanks again to this crew for coming up with that and just, you know, a different and more, I think, structured way of, of thinking through those questions was really helpful. So there is, yeah, so there's a meeting next week and then the week after. So um, if, if there's any, you know, if any of you want to check out the budget and there's still the chance, two more meetings to amend it before it goes to the voters.
Thanks. I had a meeting scheduled, so I wasn't going to be able to come. And then the meeting canceled Thanks. because of everything <laughs> happening. And I completely spaced on the tent <laughs> that there was anything else happening in the world yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure I was not the only one. Um, cool. Okay. Creative discourses work. Um, just quick fundraising check-in. There's a bunch of grants due coming up that, um, are on, I, I think mostly on, um, on my plate and working with Helen on one. Um, and Michael, I think there was just one that, um, I was going to flag for you, but I'm not remembering what it was. The AJ Musty, um, uh, Memorial Fund, uh, Memorial Institute. Is that you? The what? AJ Musty. Oh, Memorial. yes. Then they're, they're not doing this stuff now. They're, they're focusing on other things. Um, and and they're also I don't know I, I have my notes somewhere but um, and they're not oh, answering not they're, and they're not answering inquiries. So, but, Shucks, but what but, the heck? Because out of my calendar, yeah. it's due coming right up. So right, but it, <laughs> there you um, go. It looks as if we're not eligible. Um, in any case, I think the last time I looked, it was um, that they, they wouldn't give grants to city organ you know to government organizations. Yep. So, but. Um, yeah, I still have the list of the, the, my preliminary run through of that book, um, and I'm slowly working away my through, working my way through it. Most of them seem to be um, to disqualify us because we are a government agency. So yeah. that, that's a that's a difficulty, but I'll keep going. Thanks, Michael. Um, so I do have a fundraising like your budget line update. We've gotten two grants. The only one that we have right now in the system is the Ben and Jerry's one. Okay. So uh, I'm not, we'll just need to facilitate getting the other one in there. But between the Ben and Jerry's Foundation and the few donations you've received, you have $718 in your account. Uh, that is in addition to the 10K from the city, which I think is half spent at this point because we did the pre and post for um, creative discourse. They're in two separate lines though, so we can track them separate. <clears throat> I did have a conversation or an exchange with the, with someone who um, I had written to about uh, getting onto the mailing list. And you know, the question was, well, yeah, I'd be interested in doing some you know, donations. Is there anything else? Or are you just trying to raise money from this? Um, so I, I, I did point out that we had vacancies on the committee. Uh, and, Two thumbs up. <laughs> and we'll see if, if that, um, if that, but uh, this person was, um, was interested and knows other people who have, uh, who are interested in making donations for these kinds of things in the city. And so this person is going to spread the word in, in that group of people that, you know, that, that might be interested. So we'll see if something more turns up. Awesome. Do you, when, when you're sending out the newsletter um, on this occasional basis, are you, are you still including the link to how to make a donation uh, to the city? Yeah, okay. There's only been three that have been sent out. <laughs> My goal is to send them out monthly and there's no rhyme or reason to when I have the time to work on it. Um, but yes, in every one there has been the link for, for where to put in. And okay. I did kind of write that check in and, and sent that, that's, I'm all up to date on that. Um, okay. as of the holidays. And then um, I have not received anything since then. Um, and I have not sent anything out since then. So um, there are a bunch of things to be able to put into that next uh, newsletter, mostly thanks to Cameron. Um, but so if anyone else has anything else to, to add in, you know, just send them to me as they kind of come across your feed. If you like see something in front porch for and you're like, this might be interesting. Um, I, I do read them all, but I might have missed it. Um, so uh, or anything else. Yeah, that could be an interest. It's okay not to send it out, send out the newsletter all that often. When I was I sending my want... letter, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I was sending my letters, I promised them we wouldn't deluge them with, you know, with yeah. stuff. So it's all right. And I think probably everybody's in basket is filled with stuff that they, they, they accidentally joined. And so. Oh, totally. And I, you know, run this newsletter for this coalition that I facilitate and we send it out in the beginning of every first week of every month. And on Monday, I was like, 
there's nothing to report here. <laughs> like, I, why would I send this newsletter? That's just the facilitator's update. So we're not doing that. Only when there's important things to share. Okay. Um, so important things to share are outreach um, for the creative discourses, you know, work plan update. So as I said, I'll be able to send up the newsletter shortly. Um, and then the only like thing that I had on here, unless other people have stuff, I think we're going to end this meeting early, you guys, is um, uh, focus group contacts. So just because um, Julia and now Lolita have stepped down of if they wanted to be kind of a point person for doing these, um, being kind of the point per a point person for organizing these meetings. So just a um, quick reminder of like what being the point person means is, um, so let me drop this link in the chat too real quick, just in case. So um, being the point person means that one, you're kind of handling the, the logistics of scheduling the meeting. So like when's the time that works best and um, who's, how many people are gonna be there and who's gonna be there. And um, for security reasons, Oops, I'm getting a weird echo. Is anyone else? It just started. Uh, maybe Pam and Michael, could you maybe mute when not talking? Let's see if that fixes it. Sorry. Thank you guys. Um, so for security, we're not um, kind of collecting all of the names of like who's gonna participate in these meetings publicly um, or through this listserv, um, but instead, as the point person, you're collecting the names of who is gonna be in that and then sending those directly to Creative Discourses, to Keisha, um, so that she can then send out the, you know, Zoom information and how to participate in the meetings and how they're gonna get compensated and all that. Um, and so that's really kind of the main thing about being the point person is doing that outreach of setting up the, you know, meetings with organizations that are, are working on these things in the area and, um, and doing kind of that snowball. And I'm like, okay, who else should we talk to? And who might, who do you know who might be interested and things like that? Can't How do they that. want us to present that to them? Like, so I've got, they want to talk to the police, but my police work on like a bunch of different schedules. So yeah, I want to collect like the days that work best for my team and send that to them. Like, do we want it? Do you, do you want to handle that? Like, I just want to know, cause you're sort of our point person for Kesha. Yeah. How do you want us to communicate that to creative discourse? That's, That's a great question. Cause I was like, I don't want to handle that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I know. I can't imagine. Um, so. But I mean, what do you guys, what do you think Cameron? Like, would you like to try to find a time that works best and just assume that one of them will be able to make it or I don't communicate know. directly I, with Keisha or. Do you want to, can you ask them? Ask, how yeah. They would like to handle that. So then we know. We know that's information yeah. that you could just send out to this group, like as a, it's not a conversation, yeah. it's not a voting point. It's an informational awareness thing, just to say, if you have a, if you've contacted your group and have a meeting time and have like some meeting times at work, email, blah, blah, blah. So perfect. Scheduling is a allowable email. Any other questions or comments or anything? Or volunteers yeah. for taking these on? Yeah, Jeremy. Is there, any, is there any handy boilerplate language we can use to introduce creative discourse requests um, as we're reaching out to people? Yeah, I think they have sent some stuff. It's not like, um, it'll definitely need to be fine-tuned based on like the, the group and stuff. Let me, um, can I share that as a point of information in an email too? Cause I don't want to spend the time doing that right now, but yeah. It, yeah, it was in some nice. email, I think maybe before you joined Jeremy. Uh, we were muted, Michael, I'm sorry. So yeah, you send that to everybody, right? Okay. Yes, can do. I, I do have a question. I looked over this. Um, I, I sent a, a bunch of names to to Cameron about um, 
uh, the leaders of community-led organizations, et cetera, and realized when I, without looking all the way down the list, and that this, so there's some overlap. But um, what's going to happen now that Julia is not on the committee? Who's going to handle the the two that she had taken uh, on for her assignment? I think that's, that's your agenda topic today. That's what we're. Oh, okay. that's, are you volunteering, Michael? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm not. All right, okay. <laughs> For either of them? Not, not, no, not, not neither for those, for neither okay. of those. Um, Helen, it, Helen doesn't have one. Did she not volunteer? Or was she not here that meeting? I'm not sure, but I can circle back with Helen too. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. She's not here, so we can. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> you don't come. <laughs> no, she's not, that's that's terrible. She's not feeling well. That's not how we run things. No, it's a joke. Um, no, exactly. Uh, Jeremy, Lauren, Pam, doing some big eyes to you guys, or I can talk with Helen and we can hash it out. I, I think I'm feeling a little bit unqualified to take on either of Julia's. Um, groups, um, just because I, I don't want to the LGBT in either of those communities. You can put me down for the LGBTQ group. Yeah, Cameron. Thank you. Yes. Well, you're now doing four, which is almost well, half three of them. them. Three of them are my staff. That's not hard. That's my. I, I, I will push back too hard, hard here, Karen. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so then I'll put myself down for my pocket. I'll talk to um. I'll talk to Helen about it as well, and and um. Hopefully, she'll okay. be able to. And and I'll I'll add that the list that I sent to Cameron included a couple of uh, suggestions for the LGBTQ. Um, well, then I so, will steal those. Thank you, Michael. Well, yeah. The um for whatever they, you know, as good as they're worth is, so. And I, and right. I, so I, I would just add that any of us who, even though we're not going to be point persons, we can all send to the appropriate person su any suggestions that come to mind. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and I, I can, so I'm certainly happy to do that. And there are a few places that you know, where I can sort of say, oh, I, I know somebody there or something like that. Yeah. Maybe if we can get this meeting wrapped up, we can just spend, I might stick on my, stay on my computer for a few minutes and just do that, try to hammer that out at the end. Awesome. Um, so anything else for kind of the outreach? Any other thing, anything else to note? I think I've, haven't talked to anyone about this since our last meeting. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, reflections and next steps on our COVID response. So just coming out of our last call, um, hearing a lot from a sustainable Montpelier, um, their big, I'm sorry, before we move on to that, of, um, what uh, there are all these different committees that are doing community outreach around a lot of this, a lot of similar issues. And so um, if this has sparked any ideas, um, we've talked about the police commission, um, the school board, any, any other groups that are doing community outreach that we should be coordinating with and any ideas on how to survey the Montpelier community together. Because this is why this got triggered was because uh, COVID um, Sustainable Montpelier was talking about how they um, have done this, you know, survey of Montpelier residents every ten years, and they wanted to work together to make sure that they could ask some, you know, they could incorporate their questions into the survey as well. Um, and so I didn't know if anyone wanted to kind of be a point person for Sustainable Montpelier, we should invite them back. If one of us should go to their meetings of like what a good process would be for, for following up with them on that.
Shannon, you're, you're thinking this is specifically about that town survey they want to do in March, or is it broader? That's that is what I was thinking specifically. Yeah. yeah. For sustainable Montpelier, great. Mm -hmm. And then because Michael's the point person for the you know getting the policing committee's questions on it and um, things like that. I wonder if we could get there. They haven't been around ten years, right? I was gonna say, could we get their last survey? Do they have a template? Like, is there something that we could look at in the meantime to see, like, is this something where it makes any sense whatsoever to try to collaborate, or are they just two distinct enough things before we like do two? I'm a little confused. I thought that they would. I thought Elizabeth was talking about the survey that the city sends out, and the last time that was done, what, um, and and Cameron, maybe you know about this. I yeah, think it's it not had happening to, anytime soon. Right. Um, it keeps getting pushed back because of budgetary reasons, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something that the city has done just on, you know. <clears throat> I would say more or less regularly, but it was more, it's less regularly than more. Or less. <laughs> And so it's not it's not um, sustainable Montpelier's survey. Yeah, it's, it's the city's, the city's, city's survey. survey, and they want to be able to put in questions, and they're asking us about language. Um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, I thought they were doing their own survey, and they were letting us know. I think I was also assuming that, that that makes a lot more sense to me, Michael. That was. <laughs> that, <laughs> oh. I wonder if this could be an email where we could just get. Yeah. Can you explain to us? <laughs> thinking resurvey and so we can like understand yeah because the city is definitely not doing a survey <laughs> yeah which maybe they don't realize i don't I, like michael said i don't think we've done one in but, years. 10 years say that yeah. again i don't think we've done one in years um i'm trying to remember when the last one was done i i know that there was one after the new master plan um but I mostly remember it being keeping getting pushed back because of the costs of it. Um, um, but, but I mean, if if my thought is that if sustainable Montpelier wants to be the one to be asking questions, and they just want us to, I, I think her phrase was curate the language. Um, as a person who's worked in museums, I'm sort of seeing curator all over the place in other unexpected places, but. Um, I mean, my my feeling is that let them put together their questions and send them to us, and we can so we can review them and say, well, look, you might be able to use a better phrase here. But um, I mean, I think it's what they want to do is be is to sort of have us uh, help them with with the editing, not the not so much the content. That was the way I heard what Elizabeth was saying. But then was was part of our process with creative discourse a community survey? I thought that's where the rub was coming in. Was we don't want two big surveys going out to the community that might have a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds as if the city isn't planning to do one, so there won't be we won't have that conflict, right? But if Sustainable Montpelier is doing one, right. this, we don't. Yeah. I think we that's just like need to clarify more, it. Yeah. Um, I would I would volunteer to reach out to her name was Elizabeth. Yeah. Why don't I reach out to Elizabeth, maybe even jump on the phone with her, get a little bit more clarity um, on what she's talking about, and then I can come back to y'all and with some more clear information. Thank you so much. Next steps. Here we go. Awesome. Uh, and any other reflections or next steps around that conversation or COVID response? Um, from our December meeting. Uh, Jeremy, I put Elizabeth's email in the chat. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, and then for other business, I just wanted to make sure we could dig in on committee recruitment. Um, Pam would love to have you officially join the committee um, and just wanted to spend some time seeing if we could brainstorm other members who may be interested in joining um, that we could uh, meet with at, just to make that like specific ask to have folks to join the committee when we're at this really crucial and pivotal time in our committee's existence. Um, so Pam, Will you, can you fill out the form to join our committee? Yeah, awesome. 
Um, it's so exciting. Yeah, we have a new member. Uh, not yet. We have to get it approved and everything else. We'll celebrate you again, Pam. Um, but anyone else that folks think would be a good idea that we can follow up if you know them personally or um, you know if their work or um, you know, yes, folks we should we should be approaching. Yeah, Pam. Who's the dream candidate? Like describe a dream candidate. Not a warm body. Yeah. <laughs> I think at this point in our coalitions and our committee's existence, I think we are looking for um, for folks who are doers and who are gonna be able to, who have like relationships in Montpelier, who um, to help us have these meetings and to have them be successful and to um, you know help us kind of enact our plan. So yeah, so folks who who know folks to recruit to be able to you know, hold these meetings to be able to build the relationships and, and trust to be able to have these, this, our plan be successful. Um, how's that for encapsulating? What, what do other folks think? Well, I think it would be, I, I, I think it would be a good idea if we had um, some, you know, so, some, some diversity in our committee um, to, re to reflect some of the issues, you know, to have, you know, have people from the communities that we're, we're, we're talking about and trying to sort of um, understand better and understand what their issues are to have someone um, be on the committee who is in that. Yeah. Having folks of different races or backgrounds or experience living in Montpelier and where they live in Montpelier and right. or not in Montpelier or gender, yes, ethnic backgrounds, um, all that into consideration. Yeah, I, it's important to realize to to know that um, you don't have to be a resident of Montpelier to be on a committee. So we can yep. look farther afield than just to just to right around around us. Although there must be people who, um, who fit into that ideal among us. So. Is there anyone in the, you know, we're identifying people who we think might want to engage with us in the creative discourse process. Right. Like, is that spurring any or, I mean, that seems like a place to look or maybe after the conversation say, hey, like we're doing the work around this. like. If We'd love to, you know, we're already kind of doing brainstorming in that vein. So. Great. Maybe like as we're having these meetings as part of our email, if I'm going to edit this email to send to Jeremy <laughs> and to the rest of everyone else about like, here's about this project we're doing, can you just include in there like, and we need you to join. And um, that'll be a good just touch touchstone as well. And, and maybe we could have the CD folks who do the meetings say that at the end of the meeting, that if any, you know, we remind them that we, we do have the vacancy and maybe they can even come up with some, you know, pass, to, pass back to us some suggestions of people to contact for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Seeing no other genius ideas. Oh, Cameron has genius ideas. Oh, no, I don't have a genius idea. I, I did want to mention that we have advertised this, so we're going to put y'all's mm -hmm. newspaper um, as soon as that cycle goes back out. Um, so we are working on that. Um, and I just wanted to, this was, I, sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit, but I just want to make sure that we work out scheduling for next meeting because it, um, falls on a Thursday, which is the one Thursday of the year we have a council meeting. Um, so when we're at that space, I'd love to chat about that. Take it away. Yeah. Okay. So the 21st is the only, is your next scheduled meeting um, for your schedule. But um, Lauren and I would not be able to be there. I don't, of course, don't count towards your quorum, but um, you'd, you'd probably be under quorum uh, at that time. So I didn't know if you guys were able to reschedule maybe for the same time Wednesday or Friday or literally any time that week. 
just if you want to reschedule and you are available. I could do Monday or Wednesday, 5.30 to 7. What are people's thoughts on Wednesday? I can do Wednesday. I can do Wednesday. Me too. I was planning to be at the city council on Wednesday. I'm glad to know that it's going to be Thursday. Oh, so. it is Thursday. <laughs> yeah. All right. I will send in, I will change everything and, and notice it for Wednesday the 20th. Great. Same Zoom channel, same Zoom place. Okay. And so on our agenda is um, going to be learnings for that, for that. I don't think we'll have any fundraising updates because I don't think there's anything new. Um, and then hopefully maybe we can really try to dig in and focus on doing that outreach for, um, these upcoming meetings and, um, do some, do some more report back in, and digging in on that, supporting each other in who we should reach out to and, and, um, how to schedule those. Um, I actually don't know when my next meeting with Keisha is, um, but I can, alert everyone to that via email once I once I figure that out if anyone wants to join. Yep, nope, it's not on my calendar. Okay. Um anything else before we close out? I can go over kind of the next steps here too. So I've gotten that, yeah, I'm writing this um uh, Acorn Foundation grant, um, talking with Helen about the BIPOC meeting. Jeremy will reach, will reach out to Sustainable Montpelier. I'll um, talk with Keisha about how to set up meetings and we'll email the team. I will send out a uh, sample language for recruitment um, and include uh, uh, like recruitment language for the committee in that as well. And uh, ask creative discourses to suggest folks for us to reach out to. And we'll all do our outreach. Anything else mm -hmm. I missed there? Well, thank you guys. Thank you all, take care. Bye. Hey. Yeah. Yep, Bye. good to see y'all.